he puts that in the goal, that's gonna be like two to one. Cumberland beats Lindsey Wilson in the final here. Welcome to today's Coaches Show. We've got Cumberland Wrestling Coach James Hicks in the building. Coach, thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's a pleasure, man. Let's talk about your season, looking into the season, recap last year a little bit. You guys had two All-Americans last year. Yeah, um, last year we had two All-Americans. Uh, we took four guys to the tournament, um, so we brought all those guys back uh, this year, uh, but we, we ended up losing one. Uh, so uh, we added some good guys. Um, you brought back an All-American from the year before, uh, so we, we feel we feel pretty good about our roster and our season. Now you guys were able to complete your season fully last year before COVID kind of yeah. ran into. Yeah, we we got it done right there at the buzzer. Right there so, at the end. How so after the tournament, that's when every everything started to shut down. So right after our tournament. So and leading into that, how has COVID impacted you guys? I know recruiting had to be handled differently. How has training looked this year? And yeah. All the other stuff. Um, the recruiting part has some pros and cons. Um, we were able to get some guys um, that usually kind of some of those Division One teams are after, but those guys weren't able to get on campuses. Uh, so we were able to get some guys that are closer because um, they didn't get to visit some of the, the bigger schools. Um, and then in a, in a bad way, we didn't get to see them much. We, you know, we usually get to work them out and, and see them wrestle when they come on campus, and we, we didn't get to do that. So we had to purely go off film and just meeting the kids and meeting their families and and uh, evaluating their character. So it was, I think I think we did a pretty good job based on the guys we got so far. And talking about that, what are some things that you are looking for when you're looking at recruits? Uh, we're really big on the high character guys. Um, wrestling is one of those sports where, and it's it's not big enough uh, to be um, where the talent it's all spread out. So it's a small, smaller sport, so pretty much everybody that wrestles at this level is pretty talented. Mm -hmm. uh, what makes the difference is uh, the character of, of the guy, uh, what, what he does in, in tough situations and in tough spots. And when he gets here and he's, and he's having a hard time with school and he's young and not, his body's not very mature, so he's having a hard time on the wrestling mat and practice every single day. Um, how does he respond to that? How does, is he able to overcome that, you know? Does he come from a good family that teaches him that? You know, that's kind of what we look for. And you just mentioned the talent at this level. If you look across the rankings, just even our conference right. is just loaded with talent. Um, talk about how tough the conference is year in, year in and year out. It's really tough, man. We were, we were able to get in there and win it in, um, in 2016, and we, have, <laughs> we haven't been able to get back to the top since. You know, so there's always um, half the teams in the top ten are, are from our conference mm -hmm. every single year. Um, and this year, I think, is even deeper. We got five, including us, and we're at, we're sitting at 10, and we got four other teams ahead of us ranked right now. Uh, but University of the Cumberlands is at 20, and I don't know how they're at 20. Yeah. They're, they're they're definitely a top 10 team this year mm -hmm. too, as well. So, And then you got those other guys that aren't in the top 10, and, and uh, they usually have some really good individuals on their team as well. They may not be as strong as a team, but they have good wrestlers, you know, at, at certain weights. So that conference tournament is by far the most brutal tournament yeah. uh, all across the country in NAIA for sure. And you just mentioned individuals. We've got six individuals ranked in the top 20 at their weight class alone. Mm -hmm. um, let's get into some of those guys. Um, starting at the 125, Carter Cox. Yeah, Carter, he was he was our starter last year. He had some great wins for us. Um, we knew he was going to be tough last year. Uh, didn't get a chance to finish his season. Uh, but he's he's coming back with a vengeance this year. He's been a good a good leader for us as well. So um, looking forward to seeing him get in there and actually, you know, finish the season for us this year. And moving into 141, Keyshawn Laws. He's a guy who's been around for the program for a few years. Yeah, he's been around a while. It's about time for him to get some hardware at the national tournament. So he's he's always been in the, a, a good staple for us, consistent guy for us, winning you know 20 plus matches a year. You know, so um, it's about time for him to get on that podium. He, work, he works extremely hard. He's a very tough competitor. 
Anthony Maya, he's ranked uh, sixth at 149. He was one of those All-Americans that yeah. he missed out on last year. Good to have him back, though. Right, yeah, we redshirted him last year. Uh, so glad to have him back. He's definitely one of the most talent, talented guys I've ever coached. Just so naturally gifted. Uh, you know, we're kind of expecting him to compete for a national title this year, for sure. And John Oliveri, he's also sixth at 184. He's been, um, we call it top 12, so he's on the bubble being All-American. Okay. So he's always been one match short for the last two seasons that he did wrestle. Uh, so he's he's one of those, another one of those guys that's been around for a while, too. He's been, you know, so um, I'm excited to see what he can do this year, and hopefully he can get on that podium. And then... 197 River Henry transfer from Old Dominion. What what can you tell us about him? Yeah, we were fortunate enough to get him. He's a uh, a Tennessee kid from Chattanooga. Uh, went went Division one out of high school. Uh, uh, wrestled at Macaulay down in down in Chattanooga. Uh, so he's he's good, man. He's he's gonna do great things for us this year. We're really excited to have him. Uh, and we we got another transfer from ODU, uh, Cole Smith. We're, we're really excited to have him as well. Uh, both those guys are, are high-quality individuals, and um, I think they'll both do well for us this year. Cole has a uh, – the way he got here was kind of unique, uh, and I had to thank Coach Hunt, the legendary Coach Hunt. Seems to, seems to always have his hands in everything. So Yep, especially Cole, here. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Cole's grandfather calls, calls Coach Hunt. He knows Coach Hunt because he's an old baseball guy. Okay. So he calls Coach Hunt asking if we have a wrestling program. Just just off of Coach Hunt's mm -hmm. reputation and name, so Coach Hunt calls me. He says, "Yeah, this guy called me. You know, Coach Hunt. He doesn't know. He don't know much. He's like, yeah. he's got a uh, he's got a, he's got a grandson. He wrestles at Old Dominion. He's, and he tells me his name. I look him up. I call Coach Hunt back. What's this guy's name and, and what's his number? <laughs> like I'm calling this guy right now. So and we ended and we ended up getting the uh, first dibs because of that." And I think that played a big factor in us getting them because we were first to get on them. And then, you know, a couple of days later, everybody started calling them. Yeah. But we were already in there, already established. And, you know, we just ran with it and got them here. So that it's, was. It's crazy how the connections at this university and, for sure. and other places all kind of run together. For sure. For sure. So. Lastly, the uh, last person ranked for you guys this year, Patrick DePiazza, heavyweight, uh, eighth in the country right now. He's an All-American last year. Yeah, All-American for us. Um uh, he's he kind of came on late last year. Uh, he was he was having an okay season early. Came on late, got on the podium, um, doing real good this year. Big, I mean, one of the most athletic heavyweights we you know I've ever coached. You know, big, strong, fast. You know, I ask him why he's not playing defensive end somewhere. You know, big. He's solid. You know, 270. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like. Um, the sky's the limit for him, and and I'm hoping he can get it done this year. He's got to, he's got to be a, uh, a good competitor in Brandon Reed to win a national championship. But we get to see him on Friday, and we can see where we're at. And I know last year uh, Esteban Ramillard's another name that comes to mind. He mm -hmm. made it to the tournament last year. Um, tell us about him, and then who else you guys have this year? Yeah, he's a tireless worker, man. He's he's always in there, grinding. He's he's a Tennessee kid, really hard worker. You know, one of those workman-like guys that maybe doesn't have the best natural talent, but he'll overcome it with his work ethic and his intensity. So we're, we're going to have him around at, at 49, 57 this year. He's going to go up. Um, we bring back Blaine Fussell. He's probably going to start for us at 133. He's a local kid from right here in Lebanon. Um, so he's 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 one he's, he's another one of those workers worker type guys. So he's probably going to start there. Uh, at 74, Matthew Sells or uh, Brett Brett Clark. He's gonna one of those guys will be starting for us there. Uh, Matthew's from Murfreesboro. Uh, Brett's from Alabama. Both multiple-time state champs. Uh, just haven't turned the corner yet as far as in their college career. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do this year and see if one or both of those guys can turn the corner and have a, a successful career here. Uh, Coach, one thing that comes to mind when when looking at you is that we we miss you up here. We don't see you up here yeah. that often anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, tell us about what you guys got going on in the wrestling building and how that has affected your day to day. Yeah. So this summer we uh, we did two things. We added offices mm -hmm. over at the wrestling building, and we added uh, air conditioning. And uh, both of those were key. Mm -hmm. So the air conditioning, man, you know, wrestling rooms can get pretty hot, 
and in the summers it was scorching in there so uh, we couldn't really train or hardly do anything in there because of the heat so um Mr. Ron Magruder donated donated enough money for us to get some air conditioning in there. And it's been a blessing, man. We've been able to just be in there all year round and 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 work over there um and not having to go, you know, back and forth so much. It was it was a good little walk from from the office to the restroom. Yeah. So, um and then we added those offices in there. So, now my office is over there, my assistant's office is over there, so we go we go in there in the morning. And that's where we're at all day and we got guys coming in and out all day. You know, getting workouts in or playing spike ball or lifting weights or whatever. Uh, but it's nice to just be over in one spot, you know, yeah. all-encompassing uh, area. So it's it's been pretty cool so far. Uh, new to the NAI this year with COVID, they are allotting certain amount of student-athletes per conference right. into the tournament. Right. Um, can you tell us about that a little bit? Yeah, I was actually on that uh, committee for our conference. Okay. So the idea was that um, most of the teams across the country won't get those cross matchups mm -hmm. because everybody's going to try to stay pretty local. Yeah. A lot of the California teams haven't even started training or practicing or doing anything. Uh, they don't know if they're going to be able to compete this year. Um, so it was based on the average number of qualifiers you've and All-Americans that you've had um, over the past three years. Okay. So... Uh, it was kind of the fairest way we could we could figure to come up with it. Mm -hmm. uh, the coaches voted on it and agreed to it. Uh, the coaching body did, and um, I actually wanted to go another route, uh, but that uh, that would get us more <laughs> qualifying spots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, you know, everybody felt like that one would be the most fairest. We still have the most spots here in the Mid South because we usually produce the most All Americans. We usually produce the most national qualifiers. So the average came out in our favor where we still have uh, the most spots of any conference. But in the Mid-South, I mean, even though you got the most spots, you have, you know, we just talked about five of the top ten teams and possibly six of the top ten teams. You know, that's that's kind of just enough spots to, to cover those guys. And then you got a half a dozen other teams in there that have good wrestlers too. So we always end up leaving uh, a few good wrestlers home uh, from the national tournament. Uh, I mean, but you know that was the best we could do under the circumstances. So I'm happy with it. We just got to get in that tournament and wrestle our way in. I mean that conference tournament so hard that that seventh place mat a lot of times right. is is for a chance to go to national. Yeah. yeah, and most conferences are taking their top three guys at most, maybe mm -hmm. four. You know we're a lot of some weights we're ten deep, like with good solid wrestlers, mm -hmm. ten deep in there. So you know we, uh, at in our conference, I tell the guys all the time, in this conference, you just got to be ready for a war every single time you step out there. Throughout the year, um, you got to be ready to wrestle to get to get a proper seating, to put yourself in a good position, to have a good tournament when we get to that conference tournament. Uh, so you got to be able to do both. You got to wrestle your conference schedule well, and then when you get in that tournament, you have to be ready to wrestle well on that day. So we'll see. Well, Coach, thanks for joining us today. Um, we wish you guys best of luck. Tenth in the country. We look for you guys to hopefully climb that that uh, ladder up to, yes, to number sir. one. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. It was always good to talk wrestling. For sure. Talk about the team. Um, so we, we're looking to have a good season this year. We've built for it. We're training hard. So we'll see how it goes. For sure. It's Coach James Hicks with the Cumberland Wrestling Program.